Auzu billahi mineşşeytanir racim. racim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi şrah li sadri ve yassir li amri. Vahlul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu kavli. In the third of the series of talk on introduction to Nahjul Balagha, we will continue with reference to the book of Nahjul Balagha revisited by Marhum Mullah Askar M.M. Jafar, in which he beautifully writes that every person wishing to undertake this journey needs to have some understanding of Nahjul Balagha and the writer of Nahjul Balagha. In this third part, we'll be looking at some of beautiful translation by Marhum Mullah Askar Imam Jafar to highlight the beauty of Nahjul Balagha to a novice undertaking a journey into Nahjul Balagha. When Imam Ali sat on the seat of authority, Muslims were reminded of the early days of Islam when the Prophet with all his simplicity and humility conducted the affairs of the state. However, there were marked differences. Some people were now used to privileges and preferences. And the interval between the Prophet's death and Imam Ali's Khilafat had got them used to these privileges. But Imam Ali warned them in advance. Abdullah ibn Abbas says that he once called upon Ali ibn Abi Talib at a place known as Az-Ziqar and found him mending his shoe. Looking up, Ali asked, how do you price this shoe? What is the value of this shoe? Ibn Abbas said the shoe seems to be quite worn out and had been repeatedly patched. It is worthless, my lord. Imam Ali says, Well, I love it more than the office I hold, unless I use the office to uphold the truth and justice and eradicate the last vestiges of untruth and tyranny. Then he came before the people and in a sermon, Narrated in Najul Balagha, he says, Our Lord sent Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his progeny, when Arabs knew nothing of the book nor of the prophethood. He led unto their rightful place. He led them unto the rightful place, saved, steady, and satisfied. As I was th there as a vanguard, till the society was thoroughly cleaned of all the evils. My effort never slackened, nor did the cowardice get better of me. And my mission today follows the same pattern. Dr. Taha Hussein, in his famous works, Ali Yun Wabanahu, Ali and his sons, relates an interesting incident during the Battle of Jamal. One comes to Ali, one person comes to Ali and says, O oh Ali, can people like Talha, Zubair, who are opposed to you, be on the wrong side? Ali answered, Yeah. O oh, my brother, are gravely mistaken. Right and wrong, right and wrong, and truth and untruth are not identified by personalities. Know that the truth, and you shall know its people. Know the untruth, and you shall identify its followers. Dr. Taha Hussein, despite his known agnostic tendencies, remarks, I have never seen nor known a rejoinder more persuasive except the words of revelation in the book of God, the Holy Quran.
even person like Dr. Taha is now saying the importance of Nahj al When we look at what Mawla Ali said in Nahj al and as translated, translated by Marhum Mullah, in one of the khutbas, Imam Ali felt alone after many of the friends had died in the battle. And he remembered them from a pulpit. He said, where are my friends who rode on the right path and died with their feet firm therein? Where is Ammar? Where is uh, Ibn Tayyihan? Where are those like who's faced, who faced death with valor? and whose heads were carried to the sinful rulers. Alas, there were friends who recited Quran and lent strength to it. They pondered over it and their obligation and fulfilled it. They kept alive the tradition and uprooted all the innovation. When, the, when called for defense, they responded and when they trusted a leader, they followed him faithfully. In a beautiful khutbah, Imam Ali, the first khutbah of Najul Balaga, talks about the beginning of the religion is to know Allah and the perfection of knowledge about him is to confirm and believe in his existence and the most rational belief is the belief in his oneness pure, unblemished, and flawless. The absolute, absolute purity means to disallow all descriptions of him, from, for every description bears witness that it is other than the one described. So the described one is not the, not the description. So whoever describes him draws for him a parallel makes him one of a pair, thus a part of it. To conceive him as a part is a gross ignorance about him, and ignorance leads to pointing at him. Whoever points at him indeed sets a limit for him, and to limit him is to count him, and to ask him wherein is he is to contain him, to ask Wherein is he is to exclude him. His existence is not contingent to presence, not from void with everything, but neither together not comparable. Away yet not separate. Mola Ali in another part of Najul Balaga talks about orphans and neighbors. Remember the orphans, our Mola says, care for the meal when they are away and attend to their needs when they are in your presence and work no ill to your neighbor for that is counsel of your prophet. The prophet recommended that them so very often till he thought he would grant them a share in our estates. On Amr bil Maruf, beautiful passage, Imam says, do not abandon the practice of exhorting people to do good, dissuading them from indulging in evil, else the wicked amongst you will rule over you. Then you will invoke assistance from Allah, but your prayers will not be answered. On character, our Mawla says, expect from none but your Lord, the sustainer. Fear nothing but your evil deeds. Do not feel ashamed of admitting your ignorance and saying, I do not know. When you really do not know, do not fight shy of learning that which you do not know. Be patient and forbearing for it is the faith what had is well, it is to the faith what had is to the body 
Our Mawla talks about charity. Never feel ashamed to give a little charity, for to deny or deprive is lesser still. On wisdom, our Mawla says, there is no wealth like wisdom, no want like ignorance, no legacy like good breeding, and no aid like consultation. He continues on wisdom in another saying, exceeding the wisdom has few words. When he talks about a leader, he says, whoever poses as a leader of people must begin with self-discipline before educating others and let his own conduct and bearings teach before his tongue does and a master of self deserve better reference, reverence. On miser, a miser surprises me, our Mola says. He runs away from poverty but lives with it. He longs for affluence but misses it. It is this world he lives like a poor man, while in the next he will be judged amongst the riches. On distribution of sustenance, Imam says, O oh, son of Adam, whatever you earn over and above your sustenance, you are the treasurer on behalf of others. And beautiful saying on worship, Imam says, there are people who worship Allah with a desire for reward. And they are like merchants who trade for profit. And some worship him with awe and fear. They are like slaves and who avoid punishment. And there are others who worship him to thank him, express gratitude. This is the way, that is the way for the free man. And on another saying, beautiful saying, that everyone should have it in his heart. Mola says, when resolute plans fail, well-knit arrangements fritter away and ambitions and aspirations remain unfulfilled. There I see Allah the glorious and his inscrutable way. Beautiful words of our Mola expressed in Nahjul Balagha. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may grant us tawfiq to start sincerely our journey into Nahjul Balaka and start finding the depth, the understanding and those most precious nuggets of wisdom that are included in Nahjul Balaga, that are part of Nahjul Balaga and start following the system of guidance that is charted by Mawlai Muttaqiyan Asadullahi al-Ghalib Ali ibn Abi Talib Salawatullahi alayhi